if we do talk about the next speaker, Adam and Elizabeth. So Adam has spent the whole professional life in IT in different roles, tester, consultant, pre-sales engineer, business analyst, scrum masters, and agile coach. Now, moving to Elizabeth, she has joined the IT world few years ago, but quickly found that she has a knack for testing. Her passion is finding new, better, and the way of working is excellent. So now I invite both of you guys to this virtual stage. Where is Adam? He's always late. Hi, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, everything's fine. Did you bring my coffee? Yes, here you go. Yeah, we can start now. So welcome, guys. Uh, we can hope you can see our screen and yeah, lol. So you can see our screen and you can see ourselves. So that's great. And welcome on the session about the CSI testing, investigate like a pro, where you will learn about the CSI methodology, but on not only that, because since the beginning, how CSI started, it grew up much, much larger. But before going into that direction, first, we would like to uh, invite you to meet ourselves, the investigators. Thank you for this um, introduction about our history. Uh, and let's meet Ella. Ella, who is a young tester in the IT world, she just started not long time ago, but very quickly because of her ambition, she jumped to uh, the QA role where she not only replicates the, the techniques used by others, but she invents her own. So, welcome, Ella. Oh, thank you, Adam, for this introduction. I have privilege to announce you to the community. Adam, since the beginning of his professional career, works in IT, collecting experience in different roles. Uh, outside of the office, he passionately uh, shares his uh, knowledge and experience with the community by giving talks, talks and uh, by organizing uh, workshops about testing and about leadership. Privately, I know him as a foodie, traveler and book lover and as a very talented person uh, for whom impossible doesn't exist. Hi, Adam. Thank you, Ella. And actually about the foodie part, donuts are my favorite food, so it actually it's in line with the presentation. But actually, we are not the most important part of that. The most important presentation part of the presentation is the story that we would like to share with you and the, 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 the things that we have learned from the story. So how the CSA testing even started? Actually, a few years ago in our organization where we currently work demand, the, the building which you are seeing in Warsaw in Europe. So you can see we have really, really, really nice, nice office here. We can give you a tour later on. Uh, probably we can give you a tour. Uh, but okay. yeah, let's see. Uh, we were thinking about finding uh, a way for exploratory testing to be better at, right? Uh, usually exploratory testing is just clicking around the application in random, random, random way. It's like that if you don't know that there is the whole world of exploratory testing that you can learn and apply in your work. And we were looking how to bring that work to our organization. So we decided that we will start experiment in which each person, each tester in the team will take one exploratory testing technique, create a presentation of it to the rest of the guys. And then we will have like few hours of a session when we use that technique to learn it, right? And most of the guys were just taking something that was on the market and, and introducing it to the, to the team. But Ella was different, as I already mentioned in the previous slide, because Ella did something else. Ella? I was very impressed about how many um, opportunities it gives to testers. And I start, start to wonder what uh, innovative, creative, and unique I can bring to uh, to my session. After that, I start to uh, cut myself at the thought that um, that I behave like a detective and combining this thought with my uh, private interests in CSI Miami series, I ended up with my own uh, technique where tester is like the serious uh, main character who all, do all the job uh, from the beginning to um, uh, from the collecting the evidence through the analyzing uh, and ending up with the uh, final conclusion. Uh, this is how CSI uh, starts to, to, to life. After that, uh, we decide to cooperate with Adam to improve CSI to its present form. 
So something that started as a, just a framework for exploratory testing today is a way of life for tester, which we'll introduce you in a moment. I would just like my, a small comment. Guys, we are sorry for that, but apparently for the first uh, few minutes of the presentation, you haven't seen my screen, but right now it's shared and I can see on a second computer that it's shared. So <laughs> yeah, technology killed us. But we will talk about technology in a moment as well, because firstly, we would like to jump to the CSI principles. The principles are like the basic laws which you have to follow as a tester, right? As a investigator, you have your your rule book, the police rule book, which, which which guides you and and gives you like the boundaries in which you in which you move, and it also teaches you how to be a good police officer. The CSI principles are teaching testers how to be a good tester, so they give you some kind of point of view which should help you guide you through the work and first csi principle is the concentration yeah what is the concentration you need to remember to uh, when you start focus on your goal patiently collect all the evidence and analyze them make your work reliable um, you have to uh, bring to your mind that when you are concentrated um, on what task you uh, do it right now there is high possibility that your work will finish faster. Exactly. And the second principle is system thinking, right? Because if you concentrate on the work, that's a one part, but you have to remember that the thing that you are testing is some only part of a bigger system, bigger world, a bigger environment with which it, with, it will be used. Very often, uh, there is this tendency of testers just to focus only on one particular application and don't think about, for example, environment in which that application is run. Uh, they don't think about the user perspective, right? And you, you, you should test the application from the perspective of the person that will actually use that at the very end, right? But you can also test the, test the application from the perspective of administrator of that application, right? So there are different perspectives, different places, different angles from which you can test the application. There, uh, you have to understand that the thing that you are testing is only a part of something much, much bigger, which is the whole experience for the users. And then we go to the last uh, principle. Yeah, about the impartiality. Until you don't have solid proof, uh, treat all fair without prejudice. Bring answers to questions asked. You are uh, this part of the investigation. Uh, who is the most important to solve the crime, to better understand what went wrong and why it went wrong. Yeah, and I'm not a Steve Jobs, but I always wanted to say that, well, wait, there's more, because there's also the fourth rule. The fourth rule, which, which uh, is even the more important one than the previous three, when you need break the rules, right? We gave you a set of rules, the, the, the three ones that, that, that you should follow as a tester, but if there is a need, if there is a perspective from which it makes sense to break the rule, then just do it. Uh, use your gut sense, as the investigator very often, as police officers, use their gut feeling to find the suspect, right? In this case, when we said about impartiality, that you should not bring your prejudice to the work, maybe your prejudice and your perspective is actually the good thing because it brings some perspective to the to the application you are testing when we i said that you have to think about the the broader scope sometimes focus on one particular part of the system and dissecting it looking into the code of what that particular part of the system makes sense and you should test the application in this way so there are three basic rules but when there is a need for that break that rules Exactly, and now we go into the second part of our presentation, because first we have brought you some basic rules which you should follow as a CSI tester. And now we would like to give you some kind of advice or direction, what kind of skills as a tester you can look for and how you can build your own career, how you can build your yourself as a tester. And first, first you could say um, angle from which we, you can look at the CSI tester uh, job is, looking at different types of thinking, right? Because what investigators do, they look on the evidence and they just uh, put some hypothesis on that, right? So you can use the critical thinking to for the analysis of the facts and to form the final judgment, right? You can also use the system thinking, which I already just described. You can use analytical thinking or abstract thinking. So things that are not there, but you are hypothesis uh, that, that there might be something there, which is abstract thinking. Right? Don't think about 
connecting the dots from different parts, right? And you can strive on how to be better on of these uh, on these kinds of thinking by doing some puzzles, doing some tests, or even reading some books like the Thinking Driven Testing by Adam Roman, really good book, really good read. And, and even if you don't want to buy the book because it's quite expensive, there are quite a few blog posts uh, and, and articles in the internet. You can just Google that uh, about that, which gives you also the guidance and some examples and some exercises on how to apply these different kinds of thinking in your daily work. And uh, from uh, after this angle, you can also look at different angle as a tester career. Exactly. Uh, we can say that testers are, are like James Bond. We have a lot of gadgets and tools to perform our day to day work. Exactly. Like that. I see that you are looking on donuts. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, however, CSI tester doesn't fear to use those tools and he's very creative about how to uh, use them to find suspects to uh, better understand the case uh, for example you have um you have to create a huge database that uh, contains unique records that includes um for example name phone number and uh, email so instead of manually prepare them you can use simple script that will prepare it for you so uh, about the using the tools like uh, I don't know uh, the script that I mentioned, the sniffing tools, the um, testing uh, buoy for testing API tests. Uh, you should remember that possibilities are endless, and only limitation is your mind. And you don't even have to be automation testers to be a tester that uses different tools, right? learning some simple script language that help you generate data for, 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 for testing might be useful and save you a lot of time, which you can spend better in different parts of the system. We learn uh, mostly from uh, doing experiments. So try, do not uh, cross something because you are not automated, automation testers, just try. Because in your work, you can use different kinds of heuristics, testing techniques, best practices, and testing, testing methodologies. Heuristics are like the Goldilocks principles, which was described by Elizabeth Hendrickson, or the heuristic called, and that's funny, RC, RC, RC by Karen and Johnson, which is really, really <coughs> great heuristic that can put some kind of framework around um, the exploratory session that you want to perform. You can also apply different best practices in your work, like taking notes or clean code or test driven development. And, and so these best practices, which you can use yourself or you can teach your team about it, because you as a QA, as a quality assurance, you are not only responsible for clicking around the application, you're responsible about finding the best way how your team can perform and the be the deliver the best quality. Because you know what actually in my mind is the best approach for tester? to make his job uh, to do all the efforts that he's useless in the team, seriously. Because if the yeah. quality of the software is good at the start, you don't need testers at the end. And that's your final job, in my opinion, right? You, you should strive for the best practices around your team so team will uh, get less and less defects in the future. And then finally, different testing methodologies that you can use. The testing methodologies like TeamUp, which you can learn from uh, Rick Marcellis on different conferences where he or or or, um, um, or workshops that he teach. And the ESTQB certificate, which you for sure have heard, it's the, the mostly widely spread certification uh, path for for testers. Or rapid software testing from Michael Bolton, which I, I think you also uh, should should hear uh, at this point. So there are many, many different approaches and techniques that you can learn. And the more you know, the more tools, as Ella described on the previous uh, previous slides, but mental tools you will have in your backpack, which you can use later on in your daily work as an investigator. And you will need that tools and you will learn about that um, in the testing procedure when you will be selecting them. But just to sum up that part, uh, you as a tester decide what path you want to uh, go. You might be automated tester, you might be the manual tester, you might be tester that combines these two 
words you might be tester that uses uh, different um, techniques for conducting um, interviews with uh, with users to gather their their insight and then apply a different testing um, um, ideas inside your 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 tests and to give you some examples of a word of, from a word of investigators about famous investigators, uh, there was one particular one that was uh, focusing very much on types of thinking. Hercule Poirot from Agatha Christie books novels. He was very well known for in, in implementing the investigation when he was just sitting there, thinking about the case, thinking about the evidence in his world, in his head, dissecting them, putting them together, applying different theories, and at the very end saying, "Okay." Butler did it, right? So, or somebody else, right? Uh, was the one that was the, uh, the, the the one that 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 killed somebody or something like that, right? So he was the one that was using mainly his mind power because the mind is the most important uh, tool that you have in your tool set for figuring out. And as Ella already described, you can be like James Bond, right? So you don't have to know all all of this Shannon. Sh or how to say it, right? Uh, the different different types of thinking because you can be expert in writing code, right? An expert in writing scripts, as, uh, expert in some hardware that you use to sniff, for example, communication, right? Between uh, your phone and the uh, headphones that you are testing or um, hearing devices as in our company because we work on hearing devices, right? Yeah, so you finding those tools to uh, bring them to your team and uh, give them uh, the tool to use uh, on day to day work. Exactly. And you uh, finally, you can be like Sherlock Holmes, who actually is connecting all of these worlds together, right? Sherlock Holmes was very well known as a martial art master, right? He was very well known for being um, a guy that knows how to shoot from pistols, so use different tools. He was very well known for um, his disguise. He was master of disguise, so he was able to play different roles. And as you can play different roles in your project. You can play from perspective of a tester. You can play from a test uh, application from a perspective of user, from a perspective of administrator, and so on and so forth, right? Sherlock Holmes was connecting all of the different um, techniques, tools, gadgets together, and uh, became a really well-known investigator in the world. And at the very end, it's you that decide what path you want to check. And now we would like to jump to the CSI testing procedure, which uh, Ella will introduce you to. We all know all the detectives have some, have some rules that they need to follow. For example, without searching warrant, a uh, detective is unable to search a suspect's place for finding uh, evidence. This is why. Uh, <laughs> no, thanks. Not now. Uh, uh, this is why knowing the rules is so important. Uh, so here you have five paragraphs that will help you better organize your work and better uh, understand the CSI testing. We all know uh, the scene from movies or series when detectives come to crime scene and start to um, asking questions uh, or familiarize, familiarize himself with the um, crime files. So uh, this is approaching the scene we can say so uh, in this point you uh, have to remember what uh, to to know what type of crime you deal with to uh, prepare the plan that you're going to introduce in uh, your further uh, investigation after this step detectives um, uh, start to narrow uh, the field of the crime so he start to looking uh, to the environment and look where uh, clues are um, not collected, but where they uh, were on the crime scene. So this is the part when the investigation actu actually start. You uh, secure and protect the scene and collect the evidence. Uh, this is uh, very important to find first suspects. So you bring your first theories about who uh, is re responsible for this crime and next. Uh, after the job, uh, all job that is done in the field, uh, testers need to transfer all gathered evidence to the analysis team. So our job here is for now done. Why for now? Because they can occur uh, need to you to go back to crime scene because sometimes the evidence that we collect is not enough to say 
that for 100%, this is the cause of this crime. This is the cause of this defect. So we need to prepare ourselves to retest, to redo our um, responsibilities, our duties uh, due to uh, investigation. After that, um, there is a very uh, important part when detectives meet the uh, justice, uh, mostly in court when a judge familiarized himself with the, with the evidence that we collect, with the charges that we bring to the suspects. With and it is important to say that the judge might be you as a tester, but the judge might be as well the client or the product owner. So at the very end, you present the case to the final judge, right? Exactly, exactly. This is why uh, there is uh, this step that is very important uh, as a witness statement. We can, uh, in this point, ask another CSI tester uh, or developer to retest uh, our uh, plan that we did to, to check if we fill all of the um, part of this case that we should do we do not forget about something uh, and uh, after that uh, at the end there is the most important thing it is the briefing so at the end you should sit down and think about what will, what went good at, uh, in the investigation and what went wrong you should uh, gather the knowledge from it and improve as a testers because tester because in our um, field of uh, uh, and role um, in the IT community it is very important to consciously uh, involve to uh, gather more skills to be uh, to be better in our job to make our job reliable for others so they can trust us Exactly. In the debriefing, you're not focusing on this particular case, but you're focusing about the future. So you could say that the first four mostly about the short term goal, right? So to solve that particular case and meet the justice. And the fifth one is making sure that in the future there will be no more crimes like that, right? In case of software, of course, there will be no more defects like that. There will be no more problems, risks that we have found like that, right? So long term. The debriefing because you are looking in the in the future short term the first four steps which we are basically focusing on the on this particular case and uh, as uh, ella said the briefing is the most important part of every investigation here as well the briefing is for us the most important part of the presentation where we will debrief the whole csi tester uh, framework right because firstly let's get back to the principles there are three basic principles, which are concentration, because you have to be concentrated on the case and make sure that you as a tester deliver the best quality of your job. There is system thinking, which means that you should always think about the bigger picture. And by the bigger picture, we mean thinking about the client perspective, thinking about the environment, thinking about other applications that can be involved, thinking about the hardware on which you run that case, right? Thinking what tools like automation can be used uh, for, uh, for by you as a, as a, as a tester, right? Uh, there is impartiality, the third principle, which means that you should stake aside your prejudice and be uh, fully engaged into, into case in as objective uh, way as possible. And of course, the fourth rule that is uh, not written, um, break the rules when it is needed, right? As every investigator, sometimes you need to use your gut feeling. And if your, for example, prejudice will help, then use it. If the process that we just described, uh, um, you, you want to do it differently, just do it, right? If you want to invent your own tools, then just do it, right? Break the rules when it is needed. Exactly. For next, yes, I tested, uh, tested. Uh, he combined many skills. He know how to use his strengths, and he consciously uh, develop his skills. It is very important, as I mentioned uh, previously, that we need to uh, be uh, on the highest level uh, to uh, and in our work to to bring the high quality uh, of that what we are doing to uh, others can say that yeah they did great job. Uh, they can do more. You need to remember to push yourself to to do more in, in your uh, in your work, in your um, use of your mind. And for the last um, 
the briefing, I think uh, it is the CSI procedure. So it is to help uh, form uh, us uh, what to do, uh, when, and how to deal with uh, different type of uh, cases. So uh, I wish you to remember that uh, somewhere between you, maybe another Sherlock Holmes or somewhere between you, maybe another star that will uh, bring new light to the testing community uh, and give us example to go through it. Exactly. And uh, last but not least, I would like to add uh, get back again to the star break the rules because we have shown you what works for us, what what Ella have developed for demand and we think that can be spread around the world and used by others, right? But if you think that you can figure out a better way that works for your organization, for your particular project, then most probably you are right. Most probably you are right and you can invent something even better than that that works for your particular case, right? And this is the basic rule uh, of all the rules that when it is needed, you should break the rules and make your own for your own project. We have today shown you only the guidance that worked for us and is based on our empirical knowledge and, and experience we have from our own projects. And that's basically it. The timer on my presentation is so uh, sharply 30 minutes. So I think that's that's great. So we have some, I hope we have some time for questions. Uh, and if yes, uh, you can type them on the chat and you can also, at least in my opinion, you can unmute yourself and ask the question out loud. Thank you. Uh, so, question. So, so just one question. Uh, uh, my question is that can you share some good blogs regarding this one you do have or you, I mean, you could refer here? Uh, good logs? Blogs. Blogs. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, the one I uh, really like uh, is the one from uh, Michael Bolton. I don't recollect the exact name, but uh, it's Develop Sense, I believe. So you can follow uh, follow him uh, where you can read uh, a lot of knowledge. There is also the Testing Guru 99, I believe, uh, uh, which describes also different techniques. But there are also some particular persons that I can recommend you following, uh, either on YouTube or different conferences or their own um, uh, web pages. Uh, and these are people like Elizabeth Evans, uh, Rick Marcellis, um, uh, and I forgot how to pronounce that. I'm sorry, but there's there are there are a few more names. I'm not able to pronounce all of them. But there are many, um, uh, you could say, stars in testing world, which uh, give you a lot of different angles. And my biggest recommendation here is do not focus on one source, seriously. Sure. Because if you, for example, read only Michael Bolton and you think that he is writing great things, yes, he is. He is writing great things. But there are other people that are writing great things that might be contradicting to Michael Bolton, but might work better for you, right? Same goes for Isabel uh, Evans, Rick Marcellis, and anybody else. It's like the holy world between ESTQB, TeamUp, and uh, um, uh, RST from Michael Bolton, right? There's this holy world that which framework is better. You know what? All of them are great, right? Yeah. You, you just have to use them. They're all like tools, right? Like there are different kind of hammers that you can use in your projects, right? There is not like bad and uh, good and bad frameworks. All of them are good if you use them in a correct way. like a good and bad uh, cop, you know, because uh, when you familiarize, familiarize yourself with the different um, blogs about the testing, maybe you can write one about, about yourself, about your experience, because uh, all of our experience are different. So as Adam mentioned, things that uh, are good for us may not be good for you. And uh, in other way, and you know what made the CSI testing uh, better? This presentation, the fact that me and Della had to meet a few times to prepare for the presentation, read about it, right? So actually being active in a community, preparing some kind of presentations, even on things that you think that, well, this is so basic, maybe I shouldn't uh, speak about it. Not necessarily, even if you will not like speak on the very big conference somewhere, even if you speak on small events, small meetup, you still have to prepare yourself to present, right? So so uh, read about it on the internet in different sources. Uh, have a scientific approach when you look for different sources, combine them, and at the end have your own presentation about this particular topic. And even if it's not a big thing for the community, it's a big thing for you and your development because you are making yourself better. 
about uh, using the tools or presenting them, presenting them to the group. Uh, this is a good recommendation from my side. In our company, we have this dedicated time when uh, all of us can bring some tool and we don't have to be expert uh, with using these tools. We just uh, say like, hey, I just found this tool that can help us to uh, quicker uh, analyze the log from our, uh, our product, but I don't know yet how to, um, as an expert, use it, but you can might use you can might try to use it. So uh, you don't have to be an expert to, to show someone the tool or to present it to the group. It is very important to remember that we are learning all the time and we are not able to uh, remember everything. Thank you for that question. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree with your point. I mean, one source of point can, not, can never be a justifiable whenever you are learning. And honestly, after uh, listening to your session, I, I, I have never thought that testing can be done in such a fashion as well. So I really appreciate all together. So there is a, one, another question from Apita. I can read it out loud if you want. How we can understand yeah. as a tester, we are using the CSI testing techniques. Testers mostly investigate and never think that some kind of technique actually they are using. Actually, it doesn't matter if you are aware that you are using that technique. It's uh, it's like you don't have to um, be aware that the hammer is called a hammer. But if you are using hammer in a correct way, that's great. You can call it a chainsaw. You can call it a, a, a stone on a stick and it will still do the job. So if it does the job, that's great, right? So you don't have to focus so much on how to name the technique or what, what technique you, you are using. It's mostly about doing the right thing for that particular case, right? And if uh, if we could make that question a bit broader on how to select the best tool for the best case, because that I, I can understand might be sometimes a problem, then uh, my advice would be um, exp experiment. Experiment yeah. them, right? The more tools you use in different situations, the more you are aware of, okay, so this tool is not working for me uh, in this case, right? But this tool is working for in this case, right? So. It's not about the naming. It's not about the usage of particular tools. It's more about getting more experience in different tools and then combining them, uh, using them in a in a right situation. Example: CSI previously uh, was used to retest the bugs that were in the past. So we uh, tried to understand what went wrong, why we didn't fix it, or uh, did it appear again. So we use it to, to retest. This is one example of using the CSI technique, but to, uh, I wish you, I try to remind you uh, all the time that you should remember to, to be like the detective. So you are very curious. You uh, try to uh, familiarize yourself with the case. Detective before uh, he go to the investigation, he reads case files. So uh, what he should look on it, what is done to, to this moment, uh, what uh, more he should do. Uh, does the uh, witnesses were um, interrogated? Does uh, all evidence are collected, uh, secured and uh, goes to uh, analysis team? So as long as you uh, have fun from it, it is good. Question, guys. Don't be shy. I'm just. Uh, ah, yeah. 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 Thank you so much, guys. I mean, uh, for the, for the beautiful explanation altogether. Okay, so at the end, you can see on the screen our contact uh, handles for LinkedIn. So you can search us on LinkedIn, join us there, ask more questions. As we mentioned, we work in Europe, we station in Warsaw. So if you have any questions about life in Poland, just feel yeah. free to ask. It's really nice here. We have today sunny weather, but we also have snow in winter, uh, which might be a bit cold as as, as for, for, for you guys. I'm not aware how what's the weather in India, uh, but uh, but at the same time, it's really nice. The Okay, I don't want to go into politics right <laughs> now, but that, that I, we hope that the situation will be better in the future. <laughs> But if you have any questions, just let us know.
could use some space for them to to uh, try to be a detective and find ourselves uh, in the link and then by them. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We, it was too easy just to just to directly keep them. Yeah. <laughs> well, basically, thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much for joining this event. Thank you once again.